Chat, what's up, man? YouTube, what's up? This is the Needed Podcast, episode 38. I took a week off, my first week off since we actually started this up. And this is definitely going to be the one to get back. We got two weeks until the real Madden comes out, the real Madden season, the one we've been waiting for, uh, the one that we all put our time into and we're all excited about. I know a lot of talk on Twitter between the ratings. At the end of the day, it is great news for Madden. It's great having everybody talk about it, not only the players, but also all the NFL players talking about their ratings and so on and so forth. And we're going to get into all that in a little bit. But first, man, what I really want to talk about is obviously... um. Not obviously, but I do want to talk about Sewell, man. I, I know Sewell's been on a lot of my content, a lot of my things, but he lost his father this last week or two weeks ago, whatever it may be. And, uh, you know, I just want all you guys to be there for him because I know it's rough, and I know one thing I learned this last year is that the man community is a huge uh, support system, and I have reached out to Sewell a bunch of times. I know he's going through a lot, and it's obviously a friend of all of ours and definitely a friend of mine. So, uh um, Here's his link. I'm going to put his link in the chat to his Twitter, man. But seriously, you go just reach out to Wu, send him a, a DM, a message, even like his tweet, no matter what, man. No matter what time you go, go through in life, when you see even people you never met showing you support, man, it means a lot. It might not it might not mean a lot to him today or tomorrow, but maybe a month from now or a year from now, he reads something, man. But reach out, man. I really definitely, uh, that's my friend. And uh, it hurts when you see your friends go through some things. So definitely always want to be there for each other. And times of need like that. So that means a lot to me, man. And, you know, definitely some things going around. But like I said, man, like, it's been a rough year, but we definitely learned that this is a really strong support system, man. And we can definitely start. Reach out to Wu, show him some uh, show him some love. But, like I said, hit the like button and subscribe. This is episode number 38, man. Uh, ratings were the story this year, or today, or this week. That's all I heard about, man. That's all I heard about... <clears throat> What NFL player thought they were too slow. What NFL player thought they should be better. And honestly, every NFL player probably thinks they should be about a 99. You know, I mean, I probably if I was an NFL, I would probably think I would want to be a 99. I would think that's kind of where I would be at. You know, that's kind of what I would do. And this is kind of what some of the things that, that, that went on on Twitter. I know you guys followed us a lot, but everybody was pretty much upset. I don't think anybody, Keenan Allen was probably the most complained about his ratings, as you guys saw that. But it's just... I'm going to talk about why these ratings are a little bit different this year as we see the wide receivers. Uh, which I'm really, I don't know if Antonio... I, I, listen, I'm not really mad at any of these. I think these are the five best wide receivers in football. I think, we, I think all in all, we should agree on that. Chat, let me know if I'm lying. But I feel like these are the top five receivers. Well, no matter what order you want to put it in, then I think this list is pretty good as far as wide receivers concerned. You know? That's how I feel. Uh, the Eagles are better than the Cowboys. The Eagles are actually the highest rated team, which is obviously great news for all of us. Uh, the last thing, the quarterback rate, the quarterback list was a little bit crazy. I, and and this isn't really the, the highest quarterback list. I wish I, this one was the one that pretty much got the most uh, critiquing, I guess, because this showed everybody and some of the problems that we have with it. And this quarterback, the quarterback thing is pretty much the biggest deal, you know, because this is where I saw most people complaining was the quarterback ratings. And for me, when I look at the quarterback ratings, we see Rivers at 94 and Rodgers at 90. I think we agree. If we flip those numbers, the list would be a little bit better. If Rodgers had the 94, if Rivers had the 90, I think that list would look a lot better. Now, tell me if I'm wrong, chat, YouTube. Tell me if I'm wrong. I think if... Rodgers was 94 and Rivers was 90. This list would look a lot better. You know, I think that's pretty decent. You know, and then we look at the rest. I'm pretty cool. And then if I come down here, I would switch Cam and Wentz. Or I would give Wentz an 84. Wentz is better than these, these guys right here. But he's not. I don't think he's an 80. If Ben's an 85, I could see Wentz around 85. Other than that, Chad, I'm really not upset about it. And Stafford's probably a little bit better than Dalton and Carr and Cousins. Stafford could be an 82, you know? Uh, I don't, I'm not mad at where Ryan... I'm not really mad at where anybody else is. Trubisky, honestly, probably got the biggest holes of everybody. Because I'm taking... Chad, I don't care. 
listen, every day of the week and two times on Sunday, I'm taking Mitchell Trubisky over Jameis Winston, over Lamar Jackson. I'm probably taking Trubisky, man, over Dalton. I don't know. Foles obviously should be like a 99, but, you know, I don't think Matt Ryan should be higher than 89. I think that's a pretty good number. I said, if we switch Rivers and, and Rodgers, I think this list would be pretty good, really. You know, that's pretty good. I don't really know what any of these other ones are. You know, I mean. Then, uh, you know what? And look at all these bad ratings things. I don't really know what other list. I saw Sherman as like the third best corner, which was pretty crazy. Yeah, for, for Richard Sherman to be the third best corner in the NFL right now was a little bit crazy, Chet. But like I said, it's really cool having everybody talk about this type of stuff and really uh, be engaged and be in the arguments and really get everybody talking about Madden. And it's crazy because we're probably not ever going to oh, we'll play regs the first month, but most of the people, they're not going to play regs. And you guys know they're not going to play regs. You know, that that's pretty much... But it gives everybody something to talk about, and the NFL is talking about Madden. So, as much as, man, the NFL... The NFL... The more NFL talks about Madden, more, maybe the more they get involved in some of these tournaments and really start pushing this eSport Madden thing. And that's ultimately the goal, man. So, like I said, we switched Rodgers and Rivers. I think the quarterback list is pretty good. Uh, Sherman being a top cornerback is pretty crazy. But ultimately... They told us early in the year, or early in the summer, we're going to change the ratings. And why are we going to change the ratings? We're going to have a bigger gap in the ratings. And why? And you say, why do they do this? And for me, it's all about expanding the amount of time they can sell the Mutt cards. You know, because we can really think about this year, one of the biggest flaws in Mutt, not for us, but for them, was that everybody had 99 speed probably in February or January, really. And if they start the ratings a little lower, if they start people with, you know, 81 catching traffic instead of 89, now they can sell that many more promotions. Which, I mean, will probably mean buying more packs, but at the same time, people get upset that they don't put out enough content. So by changing these ratings, I think it gives them so much more opportunity to put out more content, put out more packs, put out more promotions, which is a good thing, but it could ultimately make them more money through Mutt, and it could make us spend more money. Or, you know, spend more of our coins and everything. And I think ultimately that is why they chose to start these ratings so low. And, you know, start people with, you know, average ratings. Pretty much everybody has average ratings. And we already know how Mutt has been the last two years. Where if DeAndre Hopkins starts with 90 speed, his base Mutt car going to have 84 speed. That's pretty much how it works. You know, then that that's how it goes. Shout out to Kate Nance with the sub, man. The running back. Um, my opinion on caring players caring about ratings. I would want my rating to be higher. I I don't know. I think I I'm not an NFL player. I care. I guarantee I care more about Madden than the NFL players because it is my job. It's my passion. But I don't know if I I don't know if it's anything I can compare it to my life to look and say I care about what my Madden rating is. Cause if you put W, if I all of a sudden just just you know. Just became a super athlete overnight. Like I said a prayer and woke up the next day and the Lord blessed me with just being a super athlete and I made the and then I was on NFL roster tomorrow. I would look at my rating because I know Madden. Then the next week I would look at what got upgraded. If I had a good week, I would look at my upgrades. I would because I know Madden. Uh do any of these guys really do that? I'm I don't know. I need to run I didn't see the running back list. The running back list is bad. I'm not sure. I didn't really see the running back list. But, you know, I, and for me, the best running back is probably Barkley, really. I mean, Barkley and then uh, who else would we go? Oh, here we go. Here's a list. I don't know if this is this is just the top seven. Gurley, Elliott, Bell, Gordon, Barkley, McCaffrey. It's not bad. I mean, Saquon 91. I, I would take Bar. I mean, in, in, 
I would probably take Barkley as the number one running back, but he's still just a second year player, so it's hard to give him like a ninety nine. Gurley after the Super Bowl after the playoffs, man, that it's hard to see him as the best running back. I'm I, listen as much as I hate the Cowboys, I think Ezekiel Elliott is fabulous. I really do. So I, I'm not mad at all with ninety four. I think he's unreal, Elliott. I really do. Bell hasn't played, and that's the thing. Bell didn't play all last year. Barkley was a dog last year, so. I would probably have Barkley over Le'Veon Bell right now, and I would definitely have Barkley over Melvin Gordon, although Melvin Gordon was good. Had him on the fantasy program last year, balled out. Uh, McCaffrey, Kamara, similar players, really. The, I mean, the biggest difference for McCaffrey and Kamara, if McCaffrey was with Sean Payton and uh, Drew Brees, Jesus, he would be unreal. But even though he was unreal with Cam and their offense, so uh, this list, I'm, I mean, I'm not terribly upset with this. I don't know if this is... I, I think Rodgers getting robbed was a little bit worse than Saquon Barkley, really. But who knows? What do you guys think? You two, tell me who the best running backs are, who you would rank the top five. I, I Honestly, it's hard for me to put anybody over Elliott. I'm a big Ezekiel Elliott fan. Not fan, but I respect Ezekiel Elliott. You know what I mean? Like you, I'm never – obviously, I can't root for Ezekiel Elliott, but I respect him. I think he's really good. And we'll see what happens this year, really. That's that's pretty much what it's going to come down to. But I said, like I said, I, start, I feel like they start the ratings low. They start all that stuff low so they can boost up the cards and have a longer season for Mutt. Because I don't know about you guys, but Mutt, once everybody got 99 speed, I felt like everybody was the same player. You know, you'll never open a pack to get plus one play recognition or get plus one hit power or plus one zone. You'll never open a pack for that. If you get a faster player, you'll definitely start opening packs. And the fact everybody was 99 speed that early in the game, I think that hurt them. And one thing I hope they do is not have any type of chemistry that can boost your speed. I, I don't know why that's ever a good idea. You know, I, just, it, I think it really made the game, I don't want to say it hurt the game, but everybody being that fast, that f- quick was, ugh, terrible. Yeah, so... Honestly, yeah, Madden, September, October, August. And right now is August. They push this release date up, 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 make it sooner, sooner, sooner. That's good. Because you remember, man, Madden didn't used to come out to like the end of August. And they would have NCAA from like July to August. We had our one month of NCAA, and then we would play Madden. But, I mean, like I said, it's all good. Everybody's talking about the ratings. I'm excited about it. That's going to be dope. Uh, my next top I want to get into is pretty much the tip sites. A lot of news, a lot of people opening tip sites, a lot of people starting things up. Obviously, you have problem top Madden with a thousand players. You got Madden Daily, a triple OG, lights out, always been putting out good content. You got Playbook with Zan, always putting out good content. You have Madden Turf with the most belts and the most championships. And the best players and the best streamers, you know, but we're not going to get, it's not, a, this topic isn't about that, really. I'm not going to get into better than this, better than that. You know, it, it's not, and then you have, obviously, uh, Chaos and, and Throne, they started their type, the Hot Route Tips, or what I think it's called. And that's a good thing. Everybody pretty much finding a way to make money off of their skill. Now, these people, whether you like this site or this site, these people are top 100 in the world. Everybody that signs is a top 100 man players in the world. They have a refined skill that nobody else has. You know, and they're the top percentile in the world at this. You know, so most definitely you should make money off this craft. You should sell this skill that you have. You know, because people want to learn. One thing I learned about Madden in the last three years is, man, people want to learn how to play like you play. If you're a pro, and, and we always talk about how hard it is to be a Madden pro. You know what I'm saying? That how hard it is to be a Madden pro. EA makes it hard to be a Madden pro. EA makes it impossible. Look at the 2K League. It's so easy to be a pro. They got guaranteed salary. They got all these opportunities to make money. And for a Madden pro, selling guides, selling tips, helping other people get better at Madden... That is part of being a pro. That is what I learned in the last two years. It's probably the biggest revenue stream of being a pro. You know, if you put the right work into it, you put the right energy into it, and you can reach the right audience, it is probably the biggest revenue stream for being a pro man player. And, and that's and that's why it's good that everybody's trying to get their avenue. Everybody's trying to get their way into it. 
ultimately having a million different websites is going to be a good thing for all of us because it's going to breed competition. And this is what I like to compete at now. I want to compete at getting the money, you know, and being the best at content, being the best at helping other people get good at Madden, you know, and that's pretty much where I want to go. And the other thing I want to talk about is nobody in this top 100, nobody in this, you know, that has this skill to talk about Madden, that has this, you know, knowledge of the Madden game should be giving it away for free. Not a single person. You know, you're always going to have the crumb YouTubers that try to steal it and put it out for free to get their little couple thousand views, man. And those people are crumbs because those people don't have the same skill that we do. So they can't offer it. They can't get people to buy it because they don't have that talent. We are blessed and we worked hard to get that talent. So it should never be given away for free. So if you're out there and you're one of these people that have this type of talent, it should never be given away for free. Shout out my man Celtics with the sub. But you have to realize that you're that, that echelon of player and really not do anything for free. Because ultimately, if we're all doing stuff and we're asking for money, man, the next guy down the line can't do it for free. And because one that just dries out the entire market, it hurts all of us. And when I tell you, you guys talk about how hard it is to be a pro, this is an avenue that we need to sustain Madden as a career. And as much as everybody talks about they wish you know we could play Madden as a career, you can. But you have to utilize every avenue available to you. And this is, like I said, this is one of the biggest ones. So no player that's that good at the game should really devalue their skill to the point where they're giving away for super cheap or they're giving away for free. You know, and, and that's that's important to me. You know, and and point says every known YouTuber sells ebooks. But I will tell you, there's a difference between me and a YouTuber. It's the difference between Skimbo and a YouTuber. It's the difference between Clef and a YouTuber. It's the difference between Kiv and a YouTuber. You're talking about the best, smartest players in the world. You know what? It's not Bazooka Larry at home running four verticals in inside zone. It's not. That's how it goes. And, and, and to me, what we have can't be can't be taught. Or it can be taught, but but just the creativity. And finding things is something that's a super skill and it should be sold and it should be valued, especially by all you guys that want to get better at Madden, you know, and that's pretty much has kind of become my passion in the last year or two is just I, I really enjoy helping other people get good at Madden because I, I love Madden probably because I'm good at it, you know, and because I love it helped me get good at it. And I wish everybody had the same joy for it as I do. And I think helping you guys get better will increase that joy, honestly. And, I mean, that's pretty much a tip site. That being said, man, Man and Turf, where else you want to go, man? Me, Clef, and Skimbo, like, what else do you really need? And CC. CC does all the mutt stuff. So if you want to be a mutt guy and learn the market and all that, that's CC. He's he's a he's a genius mutt guy. And then you got me, Clef, and Skimbo. What else do you need? Joe, right? Wesley, you're right. But this is why we will reach the casual player. And if we don't reach, it won't be because I don't try. I will get all these casual players. Listen, chat. And if you guys are with me, because you guys are with me now. That's what I'm saying. You 100 people that are here now, you guys are with me now. You 1,000 people that watch this on YouTube, you 2018 people that listen to this on SoundCloud, you guys are with me now. And when I touch the casual players and this shit really blows up, I will remember. Believe that. You know what I'm saying? Ray, that's what I'm saying. But anyway, that's what I feel about tip sites. I want to talk about a couple little goals that I have. Shout my man Jack and my man Uncle Luke, man. 13 month streak. 18 months for this, Jack, man. I appreciate you guys. Um, CC is a glitch in the chat. Now, I, I want to talk about goals. Let's see here. Oh, they thought jump. You, listen, you guys will learn. And listen, I, I'm I'm gonna put every all you casual players in the picky in, in the backpack. All right. But seriously, what well, I want to talk about some goals. Now I haven't really narrowed down these goals of mine, but one of them I want I want to grind. I'm gonna grind this shit out of Madden 20. Like I'm gonna grind this thing into the dirt. There will be no Madden 20 left 
when I'm done with Madden 20. I'll tell you that right now. Last year, I was really excited for Madden. It was a big deal for me. You know, I was excited because it was my first year. On the Madden 18, I kind of started with the business. I started with all that. I had a lot of success. Madden 19, I was ready to just piggyback on that. Obviously, it was kind of done for a little loop with Jacksonville and all that. So, you know, uh, I'm excited about this year. It's kind of a fresh start. It's kind of forgetting Madden 19, forgetting that entire year. And at this point in my life, it's like Madden is the year. You know, as much as January, December is a year, for me, it's like August to July. That's that's a year. And pretty much for man, it's August to February or August to March, you know. And that's pretty much what my year has become. And so for us, it's kind of like a new year in nine days, eight days, whatever it may be. So my excitement level is through the roof. Now I want to grind the hell out of man. You know, I really am. I'm excited. And, um... One of my biggest things I want to do. Now, I'm not going to get all my goals because I have sub goals for Twitch. I have YouTube goals through the roof. I do. But the main thing I want to do, and I'll tell you guys this, man, is I want... When Madden 16, and I'm going to make a tweet about this right now. In Madden 16, I played 100 or 1,300 mutt head-to-head games. 1,300. Madden, Madden 16. Before MCS, before anything, I played... 1300 games a month head to head for fun for free 99 because I legitimately loved playing Madden. I really did regardless if it was for money for free and I will tell you this as a top man player in the world I have played the most free games of anybody because I just love the game so to me one of my goals is I'm going to play 1500 games of mutt head to head I don't care that's not the only thing I want to play obviously I'm going to play every leaderboard I can all the regs, everything with that, you know what I'm saying? So to me, one of my goals is 1,500 games of mutt head to head. You know what I'm saying? But Wu, Wu is not a competitive player. You know what I'm saying? We didn't, I'm talking about all the players that have made over $50,000 in Madden in the last three years. I've played the most free games, put it that way. So one of these things is if, if I don't play 1,500 games of mutt head to head like I did in Madden 16 I'm going to give every person let's see you think so Ken? okay I'm going to give every person a hundred dollars there it is man if I don't play 1,500 games of mutt head to head, I will give every person that retweets this a hundred dollars. I'm going to tell you this, D. Croft. Does this, this don't include weekend league? Does not include weekend league? No, not weekend league separate. This is straight mutt head to head. Oh, there you go. See, that's why. That's why I did it. Boom. No, this is literally just mutt head to head. Nothing else. No, I did not play 1500 in 19. I probably played 200 in Madden 19. Now, this is what I'm saying. If I don't play 1,500 games of mud head to head, I'm going to give every person who retweets this $100. Every person. Y'all don't believe? All right. All right, chat. I'm t- I have a long, I'm telling you, it's a long season. Boom. There y'all go. Have fun. I don't know why you guys don't believe me. You know? I'm telling you, Mutt is what made me. Man 16, I was a goon. Far will these games be streamed. Everything will be streamed. My entire life in Man 20 will be streamed. This is going to be an 
epic year for myself and the business. I'm telling you guys. I promise you guys, right now, man, it is going to be, we are going to grind the shit out of Madden in 20, into the dirt. It is going to be, there's not going to be anything left of this game when we're done. I've been thinking about this, too. Now, let me tell you guys this. One of my one of my plans for Madden 20, the first month, and I talked to Clef about this, is 24 hours for 24 days. This is just, and I talked to Clef, and we're going to do this, all right? And you guys with me or not, we're going to do 24 hours straight. I have a mere Clef for 24 straight days. So he do eight hours, I pop in and do 16, or he do 12, I do 12, he do 10, I do 14 for 24 straight days. So it's going to be 24 hours for 24 straight days, and I really think that we can get this done. I don't think it's going to happen the first weekend, the first week. Because everybody, we all gonna be grinding the shit out of the game the first week. But after that, like from August, I want to say like maybe from August eighth or something, all the way to the end of August, it's possible. You know what I'm saying, I don't think I don't know if it's that crazy. Do you guys really think that's that crazy? Because I think it's doable. You know, we're just doing twelve hour shifts. We could pass off twelve hour shifts. And if y'all don't believe, listen, I'll tell you this. I might mess around doing myself because I'm that excited for Man 20. I th- you think we need a third guy? I mean, Barley You Up is in here. He said he could play the 7 p.m., the 8 p.m., the one hour then. Kiv, I am the West Coast guy, all right? I'm the West Coast guy. We don't have a third. No, I'm not cutting trees during Madden season. Damn sure not the first month, Dillo. Hell no. The first month, I'm not doing nothing but playing Madden. It can be done. I will tell you this, chat. And you guys, listen, and you guys will agree with this. I'm about it. Y'all have to realize that you know I'm about it. I don't think we. I, I don't think we need it there. All Clef got. Listen, I will tell you this right now. All, all Clef got to pull is eight hours. That's it. Can Clef pull eight hour streams? That's what I'm gonna ask you guys. Do you believe in the Clef God to pull eight hour streams? Now I believe in Clef. I think Clef is a superstar. I'm not going outside when Madden comes out. This is life. That man is life. Shit is real. We are Madden is real. Yes. But we'll see. I got to talk to him. He said it's a good idea. But you guys know I'm down for the 24 hours, 24 days. You know I'm down for that. Clappy raise. See, I don't do that. It's different. I would just be salty. Like, all right, next game. Next game. He did tap out the first night. 20 hours? I got to hit 20? I might have to. Now, I will tell you this. If Clef hit the rage, get off, and somebody call me, you got to give me like a 10-minute buffer time to get the phone call, wake up, and click the stream on. That's all I ask. Don't get petty with the, y'all were off stream for five minutes. Can we agree on that, chat? Can we agree on that? I, that's all I want to know. Oh, 24-hour stream? That's That's easy. I, I, I'm telling you, Clef could pull off an eight-hour stream. That's a day. That's like a baby day of work. A real day of work to me is ten hours, so eight hours should be easy. Now you guys tell me what you think. All right, I think I listen. I think we can do it. Also, weekend will will be back. Problem is not ducking. I like I said, he won one time last year and stopped answering my call until after New Year's. Like dead ass. The weekend wheel is going to pop. The alcohol might be what taps me out. And, and I'm I'm worried that Clef... See, I can stream anytime. Because, you know, this is my crib. I don't know if Clef computered down in his living room with his people. You know what I mean? So, he, he might not be able to do, like, the 2 a.m. to 7 a.m. You know, I think that... And I don't want to do a weekend wheel. Bang, all of a sudden it's 2 a.m. on Monday morning. I'm drunk as hell and Clef can't wake up. 
You know what I'm saying? That's going to be the biggest problem. Far I don't have a copy, man, 20. What you guys fail to realize, and Kim can attest to this, we are all the same as you guys. Just because we're good at the game and you guys know who we are doesn't mean that we get the game. You know, and that's that's ultimately what you guys have to realize, you know. Skimbo now streaming. Skimbo plus Skimbo. Skimbo, Skimbo's a go to bed at 1 a.m. type of, 1 a.m. Eastern type of guy anyway, really. Shout out my man Lackey with the sub. But really, man, 24 hours, 24 days, man. Listen, you guys know that I'm about the action. You guys know that. I'm about the action. And, and I, I, I just hope it's fun, man. How about that, man? If... If the game and the game's always fun the first month or so because you're just learning it like you and you're really not that much better than anybody. Shout out to Zan in the building, man. Ten months, twenty-four hours. I don't think it's that hard. But that's pretty much going to be a goal. Yo, five hundred dollars. Yeah, we definitely. Definitely, definitely, probably going to drop five hundred the first, the first hour on the stream that's bad it's now it's like as soon as you download man as soon as it's done you don't play it's not practice mode it's go by packs crazy but that's the life will and i've told my friends man some of my friends tell me yo let me just hold 100k man man is your job i told him man if you spend if the for, honestly if you're half if you can win 15 games a weekend league right that's it's 100 people in this chat. Most of us can probably win 15 games a week in league, especially early in the game. If you spend $100, $200 the first week, play every week in league, and win 15 games, you probably don't have to spend money the rest of the year, honestly. So that's pretty much how I feel about it. <clears throat> Bugs ain't going to do two hours, man. He can't make two hours. Yeah, so that's pretty much how it goes. But like I said, that that's one of my goals. Fifteen hundred games of my head to head. If you haven't retweeted, this, I'm going to play fifteen hundred games of my head to head, without a without a without a doubt. And um, bad and bougie. Honestly, private lab sessions are something I really want to work on, getting a way to um really uh open up that avenue professionally and I've done it obviously privately through like DMs and helping people individually but it's something I really want to get to professionally and uh, expand that avenue because I love doing that I love like even playing a game of Madden with somebody and it's like okay we started the game and you had no idea but by the third quarter you caught on to what I was telling you and seeing that growth from a player just from the first quarter to the fourth quarter and seeing them grasp a concept and run with it is really rewarding for me, myself, and also for the person because they're getting better at Madden. But, right, that's how it goes. Though, that'd be nice, man. Long live Simba. And he asked a question like YouTube asked a question What's your opinion of posting tips on YouTube? Other pros from other games do it and they build a channel off that. And you must be new, or you must have just joined the chat, because I talked about this when I talked about the tip sites. Us as man players have a unique skill, a unique skill that only 50 to 60 player people in the whole world have. And the elite tips and the elite guides and everything shouldn't be given away for free. It is a skill, it is a trade, much like a carpenter, much like you know an artist, much like a plumber. You know They're not going around doing things for free, because they have a skill, and they trained, and they worked at it, and they've mastered this craft. You know, and it's valuable. But also, you can use YouTube to put out tips and grow your YouTube as well. There can be two different sets of tips. There's so many informa so much information that you can give people in Madden that you can kind of, you know, walk the line as far as what am I going to put on YouTube and what am I going to make people pay for because it's worth that much. Now, regardless of what site you go to, I will tell you, man, most of what you're, you're, it's worth what you're paying for. Especially if you want to succeed in Madden, and I don't, and like I said, I don't care what site it is, it's going to be worth it because all these people have an idea of how to play the game. They understand how the game works, and they put the effort into the game to to learn it and teach it to you. Honestly, man, and uh, fifteen hundred is enough for me. It's, but listen, I'll tell you this: a pro tip. A pro tip can be 
it's so many different things you can do. And honestly, I feel like I, I really, I really, um, I'm going to find that balance. It's going to be tons of tips on my YouTube. So if you're not subscribed to that, you should. But also at the same time, it's going to be stuff that you're going to have to reach out to Man Turf to get because it's worth that much. You know, but there's also going to be a tons of tips on YouTube. And a lot of times you'll put out an ebook. Like last year I ran New Orleans, right? And I love New Orleans. But maybe New Orleans wasn't for everybody. And I will mess around with another playbook, say in Draft Champions, wow, I'll find a nice play. But it's not going to be a whole ebook, but I'll put that one play on YouTube. So maybe if you use the New York Giants playbook, you can add this one play, play to your offense, really. Listen. As far as spending money on packs, and they're asking in the chat about how much money should we spend on packs. Honestly, it, I've talked about this many times on this podcast before, is that man is your hobby. If it's what brings you joy, then spend your money, honestly, because people spend money on their hobbies all the time, man. We we confuse man is just a video game. You know, and, and you have to no longer look at it as a, just a video game that you spend money on, but it's your hobby. It's what you like to do. It's what you love. So, yeah, is it worth $100 a month or, or $100 a week or $50 a week, whatever it may be? If it's what you love to do and if you're spending 10, 15, 20 hours a week doing it, why is it not? Make it the most enjoyable experiences you can. It sucks that, you know, man, it gets to the point where we got to pay this much or, or it costs this much. But, you know, ultimately, it's, it's your hobby. It's what you love to do. So, if investing in what you like to do. There's nothing wrong with that. Investing in your happiness and your, your joy, there's obviously nothing wrong with that, you know. And I'll tell you this. It, it's not about the money. Because you could spend 100 and get three great players, and somebody could spend 1000 and get nothing. That's the trouble. That's kind of the trouble with Mutt, I guess. It's kind of a little bit random. But they have made it in the last year or two where, okay, if you spend 100 you're guaranteed to get this player. You're guaranteed to get 500,000 coins. You're guaranteed to get X, Y, and Z. And that makes it a lot easier than, bang, okay, I spent 500. Maybe I might not get 100K or I might get 1.7 million, you know? But I think, but the way they made rewards on Weekend League, especially if you're an adequate player, man, it's definitely going to be great for you, honestly. Yeah. But... That's so. That's some of my goals. Uh, obviously, I want to play mud head to head, and it's going to be tough because probably the first tournament is going to be on regs. So uh, balance that. My man kept man twenty four months. I appreciate you with the red bears. Twenty four months subscriber, two years. That's my guy. I heard it's Kep's birthday today though. So happy birthday to Big Cat, man. Big Cat, one of the few people I actually went to his crib and chilled with him, man. He's a real guy. We're in town. Hit him up. He said, come through. I went and seen him. That's all I'm saying. But that's neither here nor there. Let me, I got to shorten this a little bit. What we get on this joint? So 100 people, let me look at this chat. 102 retweets. So that's what? How much money is that already? If I don't play this many. 100 put a zero and a zero. That's $10,000 I already give away already. All right. Got to play this 1500 because I damn sure don't have 10000 But last thing I want to talk about, man, we want to get back to these, these classic games. Kiv is in the chat. This was probably one of the most exciting games I watched. I was live for this game. This was against the Legend Vault. And um, at the time, Vault was the glitchiest. He was tough. What are we doing here? Come on. <clears throat> Vault was an absolute beast. And this was Draft Champions. So what was tough about it was that Volt actually did get Randy Moss. And you know, at the time, Randy Moss was the swerve god, and Volt did get Randy Moss, I believe. 
You like old westerns? You like shootouts? High noon? I like guys that chuck the ball all over the yard. I hope you guys can hear this. This is Madden 17, man. This is when Kiv, Kiv looked like Cruella DeVille. And Volt was just an egg with a hat. But this was a legendary game. Because honestly, being in a the crowd, they still had live people you could actually be in a crowd. With young Kim, he's got the rock, and he's got Aaron Rodgers. And this is, if you watch the podcast, this is, um, this is actually Megan Rapino, Jesus. But this was actually the same tournament where Kid lost the Skimbo that I broke down earlier a couple of weeks ago. So Kid was playing really good. And he, he needed to win this or not. A big Kep, there he is. Big Kep. A big Kep and Volt, similar looking. But I don't know a kid. It's a, he needed to just not lose this game by enough. He didn't need to win. He just couldn't get blown out. He had to just not lose by like nine points or something. And this is probably uh, obviously one of the most entertaining games out. And Kip has Seattle playbook as we see a little bunch tight end. A little two man under Jared Cook, who was a monster in Madden. And he'll carry some players on his back down. See, Kiv really, Kiv really, it's crazy. Because in two years, Kiv really got like 10 years older. Let me show you guys something. You know, and, and not a lot of people will see this. Watch, uh, and I, I, it's a long game, and it's a really entertaining game. But look at it like this not lose by eight. So. I'll show you guys something that Kiv does here that, you know, it's a little tip for Madden that, you know, maybe you don't see it. It doesn't get him that much here, but you'll see he has Jared Cook. Jared Cook is fast for a tight end, but he's not fast enough to just run down the sideline. Now, Kiv knows someone's coming here, so what he's going to do is go inside to try to get the angle of the computer player to change, and then he can kind of just, he can get wide and get around him, kind of. It doesn't work, but that's what he's trying to do. Cause what happens? The computer player pretty much the computer players take dumbass angles, and you can manipulate the angles they take. So you'll see him try to loop in here to get the computer player to bite down hard, pause, and then he'll try to loop back out. Now he's not quite fast enough to do it, but that's what he tries to do. See it? Boom! And he just barely got grabbed by number thirty-one. So it's just little things like that, you know that. Uh, Yeah, you know, you guys can add to your game and understand angles, understand how to manipulate the computer, honestly. That's why you always click on pretty much in every aspect of Madden. Because players at this level will definitely learn will definitely learn how to manipulate those, uh, manipulate the, the computer. Miz, you know I got you, man. Shout out Misery, retired man player. Miz, you back from Madden 20 or what? Is going to stay in that DB fire press. You're going to have this slot defender here, this slot defender there. They're going to try and generate pressure, but he'll then also drop them into coverage against specific receivers. Yeah, right, man. Miz, you skinny now. You can't be good. And right here from Kip, he's flipping his If you're listening to this, man, please check this out on YouTube. If you're listening to this on SoundCloud, I know you guys can't see as he dumps the ball off to Derrick Henry there, man. Table route, corner strike. Corner strike, man, 17. Might be one of the most overpowered plays in the history of Madden, honestly. Uh, shout out to Hollywood and Carrie Q. Bro, I, let me tell you something as I mute this real quick. I always think Kerry going to be good. I promise you, every DC tournament he makes, every live event he makes, I think he's going to make a run. And he just always lays down for some reason. As Kiv hits the C-Route right there to the wide side of the field. So he really prepared. He definitely has Seattle playbook. He gets that popping. Probably one of the best playbooks in Madden uh, 17, especially for... Uh, Draft champions. It might have been most here. Henry was it? It was rookie year. It was rookie year. Derrick Henry. So I really don't know exactly what promotion it was. Yeah, but I always expect Kerry to pop up, and then he just uh, he'd be laying down for him, honestly. Bro, Kiv, yeah, see, what you guys don't want to say about Kiv, he keeps the tags on his clothes and takes them back after the live event. I'm telling you, he don't have none of this shit. 
can't run sneak here. You gotta look toss, gotta look. Toss Henry. Good cut back up the middle. Scores the touchdown first drive. And there's an early score from young But Kiv is definitely the type to keep the ticket. You should have seen him in Vegas. He had to ticket all his stuff. Yeah. Run a swag. That's a Kiv heavy run a, run a swag, man. So, and this is what was great, honestly. This is what's great about watching this game. Because I it was see Kiv is pretty, like, pretty much... Kiv is pretty much, like, just... He pretty much does what he wants. Dots professionally, gets everything done. And then we see Mr. Volt comes out here and is five wide, and he just lets this thing fly. So, this is why I was so entertaining. It was no, like... There's no sitting around. There's no seeing dots. No no running back passes. It's just we're taking the top off. And it was crazy because I'm telling you, Kim was out there looking helpless on the defense. I think this is slant zone. Just one play. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> One play touchdowns all day. Three streaks. Wow. And, and, listen, that's and Volt, the and the best thing about Volt, about Volt, is how, Volt, it don't matter if he's down 100 or he's winning, but he's swerving every play. He's got that same face, and he's just chilling the whole time. This is a beautiful pass, man. Great animation. So... So when I tell you, listen, that was pretty much what this game is. I'm saying it was watching Kid dissect defense, go down, score points, and it was watching Volt literally take the top off and just go right at his head every single time he got the ball. As we see Volt out here in the nickel normal, which obviously was the most dominant defense. Now, it wasn't good in the challenge yet because these guys didn't move these safeties down in the box. That's what changed nickel normal is when they started moving these safeties down in the box. It made the outside corner really unblockable. Yeah, Volt, Volt's biggest weakness was that he leaned on the swerve a little bit too much. But that's what made it so good for him because he could really pull it off pretty much in any situation. You know, it really wasn't. As we see Kiv with the uh, play action. Run by and cross, running by cross man right there. I might have to be all the way back, man. It's, we shall see. And one thing, as I mute this, I'm glad they had the double, they got the double um, streams now. So we don't have to just wait for little updates. If we want to watch Hollywood with this carry, we can go to EA Madden 2. You know what I'm saying? So that's definitely a good thing that they had the double streams. Now we're back. This kid's second drive. So one thing about giving up a one-play touchdown, man, it, it does hurt, but you're right back on offense. There's plenty of time left in the game. As we see Kiv go for the uh, double streak, Henry just running people over. Yeah, get off. I love it when guys go check down. I just absolutely love it. It's one of the hardest things to do on a consistent basis, but it's so. Stenner, you didn't like Nick? I thought Nick was really good, man. That's a guy that checks down very often, and one of the reasons that he's so successful in this game. This is Kiv getting super lucky. Like. I don't know who. I feel like he could have thrown to everybody but him. Will route was a touchdown. And Kiv just pressed the button right there. He pressed the button and got a score. Come on, Henry is just such a horse. It's good, just a great player to get in draft champions because you can score those touchdowns. As you can see what, what Kip is thinking about here because he wants to take this all the way to the middle quarter. Rico? Rico was a black guy. 
No, Kip didn't just run one play. Like, Kip was just... And I hate... I'm going to have to play more Xbox because I got to play Kiv more. Because I've only played him two times and he fucked me up both times. And I don't like that. Because for me to be good against somebody, I got to I gotta get a lot of looks. You know, because I, I don't know any young Kiv tendencies. Maybe I got to watch more games or something. But I need to get some more looks. You know, because I'm not good. Like, that's, why, that's why Skimbo is my son. Because I got enough looks. I got enough looks at Skimbo. You know what I'm saying? He don't surprise me with anything. Kiv, I, he always just got the right call so far. As we see Dollar right here against the little dude's close. Kiv going. Oh, we go. Kiv with the. He was not prepared for a run commit at all right there. Just not prepared for a run commit. And, and this is a play like, bro. How are we not prepared for a run commit right here? Like, there's just. You're in Dollar. You have to kind of be prepared for a run commit. And that he could have hit Jerry Rice for a touchdown. But the second panic throw by Kiv. See? Oh, no, man. This guy didn't even move. Was that not a run commit? Hold on. That was scary. Because I would have gone to this wide side over here. Look at this. Is that well? B is open, but the reason I'm throwing the X is because B might have went out of bounds. But obviously, when you're prepared for a run commit, you're prepared for it. And this guy really didn't shoot down like this guy did. Look at look, like look at the difference in the corners right now. So that would that would been crazy if that guy would have stayed and picked off that out route. But anyway, Kip threw it to the ground. Had to settle for three. And I talk about it all the time, man. Threes and sevens. No, but seriously, Kip, it was a run commit, though. So it would have been a fluky pick six if he would have picked it. No, you ain't not in that much time. You didn't look over there that fast. No, but seriously, that was a fluky. I, dude, how did he, like, stand there like that? I, I felt like that should have been a touchdown easily. No, you ain't look over there. If you looked over there, you would have got sacked. You would have just pressed the button. Come on. Kip, Kip in the chat trying to give himself too much credit right now. I looked over there and saw it, so I just panically pressed A. I breeze right. It would have been six six. No, for real. I just, I, I just that corner, that corner did something. He wanted. No, he ran commit is what he did. That corner shouldn't have been nowhere near. I don't think he would have picked it though. So here we go back with the Volt show. Held Kip to three, and that's all the Volt man needed. Oh, this is Swerve for sure. Oh, overthrow. Look at the face. Look at the savage vault. Tell you, this game was lit. Three streaks. Oh, yeah, find somebody. Find somebody. Nice little playmaker. Knew he had him in the flats and sent him deep. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, the playmaker is a great feature that allows you to have the ability to grab one of your receivers and send him down the side. Are they talking about Bugs? He said, don't bring back Bugs? So first and 10 at the 37. Look at Volt with seven streaks, man. You got to love it. This is another learning point, chat. This is another learning point. This play before here, right? Where Kiv do that, or uh, Volt do the stupid dot. I want you to look at the pass rush that Kiv, I don't, that Kiv gets on this play. Right? Now, user's the man. So to give up a play like this, honestly, you need to get no pad. Look, he has all double teams. He has all day. He has all day, and he finds a play like this. So naturally, what when this play stops, all Kiv is talking about, God damn, he had all day. Kiv said, I had good defense out there. I had everything covered, but he had all day, right? So the next play, when, when you have all day like that, the next play, Kiv is pissed about that. He's going to send pressure. Naturally, when you have a play where the defense gives you all day, the next play, the defender is going to bring some pressure because he's pissed that you had all day. 
He's not going to sit back and allow that to happen again. So immediately the next play after that, you see Kiv is going to do the same look, but he's going to send six, I believe. Once he goes with, yep, send six, free off the edge, vault throws the ball away. Exactly. I wouldn't call it really a rage blitz, but yeah, it's similar to that. Like I said, you guys hear this all again. He's going to rage blitz because he was pissed he just gave up all that time. And at the same time, I, I think now, after he just showed a rage blitz, he might drop back into coverage. I don't think he's going to send six again. You know, and that's what I would be thinking on offense right now is Kiv going to blitz. I would think he would drop into coverage here. And he does. Rush three, he's got a touchdown. Oh, he lobbed it, though. Good swat. See what I mean? You get into a vibe where defensive players don't want to do the same thing every time. You know, so that's what, what I would have guessed that he wasn't going to drop into coverage. Third and 10 now, you're at your infield range. A sack would knock you out of points and keep Kiv with the lead. So you could probably expect a blitz here. you got to be ready for it at least. Little bluff blitz over here. It goes for the swerve. Inside swerve catches it. Pretty much a touchdown. That's the one thing about the swerve. If you overplayed it like that, you could just run inside and catch it. Honestly. You know, that was one of the things that, that people didn't understand how hard it was to guard it because... You couldn't overplay. You couldn't overplay the uh, outside, or you would just get like user caught inside. No, I don't remember man seventeen. Oh, man seventeen goal line was hard because of Blitz C. Blitz C was hell down here in the red zone in man seventeen. Power O was never the call. I don't think. Maybe Sting. Oh, and there we go. Rivers getting in the end zone. And Volt takes the lead over the number nine player in the world, Young Kiv. And he gets it done with his brand. Everything is still working for you. Just put another good drive together. Let me see Kiv back on offense, man. So Volt gets the ball at half, and we see it. Carry Q again, getting a nice little run. Selling for three. Bree, Breeze in the chat says the swerve was bummy, and I want to say why. That's why I asked you guys, and, and YouTube, if you're watching this, why was the swerve bummy? What was your opinions on the swerve, honestly? Because for us, it really separated, you know, people with user, people, and it made, you know, the ability to use these tall receivers to be able to user catch to some extent. Ooh, good lurk right there by Volt. Because what it did is, if you were ready for it, you could really stop you could stop the swerve. You know, you could pick it off. It was it was definitely a, um, a risky throw if you're playing a good player, especially if they're ready for it. And that's the reason why Volt wound up losing in the Madden Championship because Problem picked him off three or four times stopping the swerve. You know, and that was uh, pretty much the risk that you ran if you were a swerve person. Ooh, Jared Cook with a huge catch for Kiv right there. You know what I'm saying? So it's always, it was definitely a risk. And, and one thing... The one thing about the swerve is it allowed a great player to go play an average player and just blow him out. Where now in the game, it's hard to really blow somebody out and just embarrass them. And the swerve is something that allowed that. And for somebody that's at the top of the game, like myself, I mean, I liked that aspect of the game. You know, we could actually go score 80 points on somebody that didn't know what they were doing. Like, honestly, like, we play bad now and you go play one of these NFL players. If they play on a D lineman... And you, it's going to be tough to just absolutely beat them by 80 points, you know. But in Madden 17, you were beating people by 80 points. Looks like Kip just moving the ball down the field. So it looks like he has Safarian Jenkins and Jared Cook, you know. So I don't know. I don't know if that's Safarian Jenkins. Safarian Jenkins is a backup player or he's actually a good player. No, what happened in this game, and I've talked about this on the podcast before, is actually True Boy, uh, Problem, B, everybody, they were cheating for Kiv. So they were in Kiv's sight line telling him how many points he could he had to win by. You know what I'm saying? And uh, nobody was helping vote. And this is the game where Beast Mode ran on Beast Mode Mac, man, the one who actually won this tournament, ran on the, ran up on the stage and actually told Volt what he needed to win. As we see a dot right there from Kib. Almost didn't get that off. I saw what he was looking for the whole way. So Beast Mode ran up on the stage and, and, and told 
Volt what he needed to do to win the game. So he ran out there, and that's when Problem went and put hands on Beast Mode and, like, choked him. Oh, look at the young girly. Yeah, Be Problem went over there and put hands on Beast Mode for doing that, which is a little crazy. But then Beast Mode won the tournament. So maybe, like, next tournament I'm going to tell Problem to come put hands on me, and then I can win the tournament. Oh, look at Henry not standing up for Kiv right there. Now, this is where Kiv should take all this time off the play clock. I might have even called a timeout if I was Volt there. Yeah, Prime, I'm telling you. That's what happened. Let's go. I don't tell you about it. Prime definitely choked out Beast Mode. And Beast Mode just sat there and was like, I, I honestly don't. If I was Beast Mode, I don't know what I would have did either. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if I. Because probably, probably fuck up Beast Mode. I don't know what, what he's supposed to really do. Although in that situation, I don't think you'll ever. Ooh, kid with a little pass out of. Kid, we got to talk about this play call. We got to talk. See, because Kiv is so good, but he's so ass at the same time. Like, one, he come out of the huddle so damn late. And it's even worth calling a timeout so you can take your time. Take all this time out. And take a timeout. Take all this time off the clock. And take your time at the line. He snapped this ball so fast. And this is probably the only person he's going to throw to. Meanwhile, everybody else is open. He just fires his ball right there. Oh, and this is a play call. Again, what do you guys do here? I don't even remember what the hell Kid does. The but he's down 14. Molt is going up top with, with, with ease. He's going up top. He's scoring. He gets the ball a half. So Kid's going to go for it. Going toss for the, for the guap. Sting for the guap. Oh. Man, you should have hit that 10 cat fullback in the flat, number 46. Yo, Blitzy was so damn hell. We're going to sneak for the guap? Yo, what was crazy, I'm going to pause this real quick. What was crazy about this game that we don't remember is there was no quick audibles. So, kid come out and quarterback sneak, that's all. He can't go to toss. I believe it's sting, power old, pass play, and dive. What are the three audibles? So, he can't go to toss. So, before the play, you have to decide whether you go quarterback sneak or go toss. Like, you can't do that at the line of scrimmage. That's an automatic. You have to come out of the huddle and either toss or quarterback sneak. Or fullback dive. Those three are all separate plays that couldn't be audible. So he was committed to quarterback sneak or or sting. Because you, you never run power roll down here because this guy shoots right through the gap. All the audibles you could ever ask for. I'm going to go make a ham sandwich. Let me know what happens. Zillion playmakers. And he'll decide. Oh, he got it. And he'll get it. Jeez, big call. Let me see. So that's honestly we kill EA, but man, putting them quick audibles in the game is huge, man. I think that was the skimbo goods, skimbo goods for that too. Skimbo's are wait till wait till one second. And I think that was a top mad shit, Kevin Mo and shit. We go wait for one second to do your quarterback sneak. Skimbo John was like, call it, flip it, and then one butt tap, and it works every time. Yo, y'all are such losers, dude. Call it, flip it, works every time. Call it, flip it, butt tap. Damn, Kiv just got super bagged. I'm telling you, you asked him. That was definitely, no, that was, a, that was, I swear Mo was the one, man. Yo, wait till one second to do your quarterback sneak, it works. Yeah, that one second shit, yeah, y'all believe that shit if y'all want. Oh, that was a dot. And why not? Jerry Rice. Well, I mean, what my man Vote had no yellow zones right there. Takes the lead. So that was a big sequence to keep. I mean, that really just now Vote. That was a big sequence. Getting that quarterback sneak and getting that dot. That's what D. Croft, they've been saying that for years, man. My man Volt, no kick return. So this is what I asked you. What is, what is Volt going to do out of the huddle? 
You already know what he's going for. Is he going to get it? Is he going to pop the top? Not tell you. This was an edge of your seat game in the crowd. Because I went 0-3, so I was just there for fun at this point. Cover four. Ooh. Now, I told Bugs. Bugs played Volt. I said, just run cover two and back up your defense. Now, this can't be cover two the way he moved in the corner. Because the further you move back to safety, the harder it was to swerve him. Jesus. That was rough. That one was rough. That was, I need a big play. Let me chuck. That, that wasn't even like a swerve. That was just a... That was ass, honestly. That's because Kiff was dumb. Kiff shouldn't have had a problem stopping it. But really, the two that he's caught have been kind of shitty, honestly. Kiff's playing bad defense, man. I'm telling you, if he just back... The, the one before that was a bad... It, I'm telling you, that could have been a pick. But the other two, I'm telling you, if he just backs up the safety... Really a shitty user. Like, yo, he, like, he moved, bro, I'm telling you. It's be, he could play way better defense. Yeah, the last play was bad. The one, the, the big play could have been a pick. But that one was just shitty. He, uh, bro, like, he got to make a play. One, he giving him way too, he not, he too comfortable back in the pocket. I'm telling you, Swerve was not this tough. It wasn't. This man, 17, Kid versus Volt. Madden challenge, group play. Kid needed a, Volt needed to win by nine or eight points or something. Dude, I said, watch your neck, pretty much. I love this man. This shit was, bro. Oh, we got him. Rack. Huge play. Oh, he almost fought through that, too. But I wish they showed behind the scenes. There was popping in the crowd for this game. The swerve was awesome for Madden. I don't understand why y'all don't like that stuff, man. It's only a few people... Could do it at a high level and it separated people. And it was only a few people, and you had to be good to stop it. You had to have stick anticipation to stop the swerve. Like, it was definitely a good thing. Yeah, it was definitely a good thing. Did they have interviews here? I want to hear an interview. Nobody care about this game. Oh, here we go. Okay. Shout out to Dre. Well, you have a one-point lead against one of the top ten Madden players in the world. Your grandpa's here, made the drive from Boston. Shout out to Grandpa Volt. He's here. What does that presence mean to you, having him here? It means a lot. I mean, I like, I spend a lot of time with my family, and I like have my grandpa around, and he enjoys football. And I, I go up to his house, to my grandpa's house, to watch all the Patriots games. So it means a lot. That's big. Well, Tyler mentioned we don't know a lot about you. The Madden community is finding out a lot about you. Archie specifically wanted me to ask you, what does your name mean? What is the origin of why your name is what it is? I just came up with it a few years back. That's <laughs> it. it. It doesn't mean anything. It was just made up randomly. <laughs> Random. We love it. All right, let's send it to All right, Scott. Chad, Drea, 1 to 10. Come on, chat. Chat, give me a Drea 1 to 10, chat. Come on. No, nah, for real. No, nah, no. Nah. Volt's a good kid, man. Dre is an eight? Tell you, get Dre is an eight? Chat, Dre is an eight? An eight? No, nah, Dre is not terrible, but honestly, she she do look better on the, on the camera and stuff than she do like in real life, honestly. 
And her eye, look, she got, you know what I'm saying? That shit a little crazy, bro. See, you can't cheat on Drea because she see everything, bro. You can't cheat on a, you can't cheat on a chick with an eye like that. You can't. She see everything, bro. She see in front of you, behind you. She see down the block. She sees fucking everything, bro. You can't cheat. Honestly, you can't, bro. Like, that's just real rap, bro. You can't, can't nobody cheat on that. I can't date a chick that sees everything, B. I need a chick that look in one direction, not both. She can't look in both directions. I can't be with a chick that see both directions. What? Oh, Vol yeah, Vol's a good kid. His grandpa was cool as hell, too, man. Well, let's see. This game's still... Damn, they, we used to have... Half, we don't have halftime no more. The EA tracker is in and out of that studio now. They ain't trying to pay no more studio time. Listen, Dre is my boo. Ball at the 21, and here comes Vault. Oh, so Kiv out here, and is this still doubt? No, is this 3-4? Look at Volt on the little wide trips. Some point we're gonna have to get the sound oh yeah, I did. Listen, I, listen. I'm not gonna act like. Oh yeah, that was a swerve. That was swerve your dick off, boys. <laughs> that was swerve your dick off. That's what that was. Kid got his shit swerved off right there. That's not. That's no user. Get your shit swerved off. That's what that was. They should have showed again. I'm assuming. That wasn't a glitch. That was he got his shit. Yo, that was, yo, how was that not hell? How was that bad? But that's Kiv had no stick. What? Yo, y'all, Pony, I started to think you a bum. I'm really starting to think you're bummy. No, it's not. Listen, if you expect it, it's not hard to do. It's not. I'm telling you. But Volt was the best, though. He was the best. But gotta be better. It do take a brain. Y'all, y'all suck. I'm starting to think y'all really suck. Swerve don't take a brain. You're right. It takes user, like video games. Ooh, that'd have been a dot too, though. Who got him? Michael Johnson. Now clip. That, no, Cliff, Cliff clicked on. He clicked on. Oh, good run stick right there. Y'all suck. Oh, a fumble. Oh, man. To the Baja. I'm starting to think y'all bummy, man. Yeah, this tournament was Bosa's debut. But that was like spinner. Grandpa kind of hell. Look at Zan. Double Bosa might be held. Throw it! Oh, Kiv is shook right now. So, like I said, Kiv had a plus eight spot. So, right now it's 35 to 28 to get out of groups. Back then, you had to care so much about point differential because only two people made it out of group. Now, three people make it out, so point differential really is not that big a deal. Of the bunch. Next thing you know, Jerry Rice is coming free. 
That was a great dot. Allen has an emote now? Why does Allen have an emote? Allen's too ugly to have an emote, bro. Far, you about to lose your mind, bro. And Pony, man. Listen, y'all should not know automatic payment. Madden 20, all mine's gone. Oh, that's the skimbo. Oh. Top 32, that was hell. Far, don't act like that. Watch it. I have the best emotes, bro. No one uses the... Nobody uses the uh, Joe Rice emote in the chat, chat. Do you think that's worth money, the Joe Rice emote? Chat, YouTube, also, man. Think about some emos for Man 20. What's some good emos? I mean, I got the Henny at the end of the day. At the end of the day, the Henny is the ultimate, man. We might be able to get rid of Pat Pete Moss, Clint. I got Clint, bro. But now, Kiv, like I said, Kiv is plus eight right now. A bullseye for a dot. Uncle Lou, that's so damn creative, bro. But right now, if you're vote, you got to know. And this is the biggest thing about about knowing the score is knowing how to play. And this is the biggest thing with Kiv having that little, having them people to his right. Like right here, he's on the TV to the left, to his right. Everybody's standing like, yo, you got to win by eight. But you got to not, you got to keep it within eight. So that changes how he plays. If Volt doesn't know that, he's just playing. You know what I mean? Y'all might need a scoop on a 2K tonight, too, boys. So, that's why one thing about... And you guys can tell me, is is the point differential, should that be common knowledge? Should that be just given to everybody before the game? And I think that's the best way to do it. But it definitely affects the way you... Uh, Good block, good stick too, you know, trusting that block, bro. I never trust that block. That's why I suck at toss, chat. And I don't know how you guys feel about toss. That's why I suck at the toss. I always, I always never trust that, never trust that block. As we see Volt run the ball right here. That's why I never run toss on first down. Like, if you ever play me, I will never run toss unless it's for all the marbles. Look at Volt going to the best play in the game. Smart routes to post. Second level stuff right here. Oh, I love this play right here. Oh, he just dumps it off. Okay. Good run. Take it to the fourth quarter of your Volt. Okay, Volt. I like it. Nobody should know. I mean, at the end of the day, your people are going to know the score because they're able to do the math themselves. It's not really that, it's not that difficult to really do the math, you know, especially if you, but like I said, with the new formats, it's really not that big of a deal anymore. You know, it's not, it's not the uh, end of the world point differential. You know, and it, it was tough because as we see, I think Volt goes up top on the little screen right here. Yep, look at this throw. Wham, this pass was ridiculous, dude. I, I hope they, they replay it. Replay as you guys got some TD action over there. Yeah, when you're talking about Volt, you can't turn away. 
Volt hit an absolute laser. Look at this throw. Jesus Christ. Chat, was that a laser? Chat. Jesus, dude. That was a laser by Volt. So Volt, back up 15 points. Pro Bowl, if you could take a touchdown, you'll always take a touchdown. This was that was Skimbo set up. Verticals with a hitch on the running back. I, that's the reason I never ran cover two against Skimbo. Shout out my man Fancy with the sub man. Seven moves. Little bleacher blitz from Volt. Good scene. Oh, that's Cam. Cam got to kill him right there. Is that Baldwin? Taylor, I got you. You're right. You're right. How many months you want? Five months. You might have to wait to get to, to eight months or something. But I got you since you you the man. I got you. Five months is a hell of a month. But you the homie. But Kim got a score, and he's got it. It's almost to a point where he, because you got to think he's down, he's plus eight right now. So he's sitting at 35. Sacked again. Who's that, Chandler Jones? Golston. No, we didn't do skip over his mode. That's some good skip over his mode game, especially the man 16. I did all man 17 this year, man. 17. Was that a run commit? What the hell? I want to say that was an accident run commit. Tell me this isn't a run commit, chat. That's definitely a run commit. And Kiv dumped it off. I guess he was about to get sacked, maybe. But definitely was a run commit. And that's the thing, man. Not a lot of people think about getting out of bounds, but man, getting out of bounds in this situation is big because it will save him some time. Although, Kiv, and this is where Volt needs to know the score, too. Oh, yeah, the bluff blitz was hell back then. Especially on C routes. For a bunch of C routes. I don't know. I felt like we still could have had up the top. I did Prime versus Skimbo, man. Dirt, check out the YouTube. A podcast is probably Skimbo versus. No, I think it's called Podcast 34 episode. It's definitely on there. So we got 4th and 10 right here. This is for the game. Kid want to motion. This is the play he ran for a touchdown earlier in the game. The exact same play. He's going to have X. Good dot. If he can get out of bounds. Same play he ran, same setup he ran for a touchdown, probably in the second quarter, I want to say. They hold on? Oh, Jerry Rice got to hold on to that. Yeah, I'm over his cleft as hell. I think I went over that two or three times. Good that. And that's just taking time, though. It's taking time. It's taking time. But if Kip gets eight, I really don't remember exactly if he because he's going to get seven, but he'd be down by eight. Is that an equal? Is that equal? Yeah, Taylor. We definitely want to do weekend wheel a little draw action. Niner, bro. It ain't time tonight. We got to do an epic Sunday or, or Friday or like Saturday or something. High ball. 
Held on. Good dot. See, no, 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 no. Bless somebody else. What kid looking at right now? Look at his eyes. Look. <laughs> Bless somebody else. Do I need to go for two or one? Do I kick the extra point? I go for two. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Oh my God! Here, man, we definitely locking in though. We we gotta get we gotta get Twitch ready for Madden 20. It might be Niner. It might be the night before EA Access stream. That's what it might have to be tradition, Niner. Oh, we got a commercial? Oh, Lord. Now, that might be a hell of a tradition. Like, the last night before you asked us. So, Kip, back down at eight. He said he had to keep it within eight. So, Volt can't score any points. But Volt kind of know. Volt has to know. Good dot, the Moss. See, and what's crazy about it is Volt might think that he needs to touch them. Like, it might be Volt thinks he needs to touch them. Kiv taking the timeout. So if if your vote, if Kiv take, it might be a bluff timeout. And this is what crazy when you play in these games, you don't know if the opponent knows what you know. I think that was almost a bluff timeout. Like yeah, I want to get the ball back. So he kind of hoped that. <laughs> what you call it? He kind of hoped that Volt sits on the ball, so he don't try to score again. Because I think with this score, Kiv going to move on. A fourth down for the kid for what's gonna call it for volt guess the stop right there for volt man oh so you needed some points so eight so why didn't you go for two thought you were gonna get the ball back Imagine being a Skimbo. How can a human being be a Skimbo fan? So now, Kid just wants a field goal. If Kid can get a field goal, he moves on. Yeah, Glitz, a lot of times, but a lot of times, like, and I'll, I'll talk to that about him having a drag. Ooh, big squeeze right there by Baldwin. But I will talk to Volt having the drag. I don't know if we can look back and look at this fourth down play. It's, yeah, obviously, yeah, this drag, this guy's wide open. But a lot of times when you get into a fourth and one, if you get to a fourth and one, right, a lot of times before the play, you assume that this lurk is going to cover this guy. Now, obviously, assuming something in man is bad and it can get you in a lot of trouble, but... At the same time, it also it's a pre-snap read, and it's not even a pre-snap read. 
as much as it is a pre-snap thought, if that makes any sense. That sometimes like you'll go into a, you'll go into a play with a thought that okay he's going to cover that he's going to cover the short side. Now it looks like he manned up the running back, left it. Did he man up the safety? Uh, this is a tutty if he manned him up. But you, you know, so you go into a play thinking he's going to stop the shortest thing in the world. So let me assume he's going to alert that, then look above him. But obviously you're right. He could have hit this right here. Boom. Also, another thing about this is tough. You see he manned up the running back, manned up that guy. So you when you when when these guys are all coming out of this cluster, you really don't know who they're going to. Obviously, it looks obvious now because we're watching it after. But it, and from this break of the football of the snap, you really don't know who these manned up guys are going to. So you have to wait to see and declare who they go to because for all you know, they could be manned up on this guy. And honestly, for all the plays that Vault had all day, Kiv actually got some sheds this play. Because this drag doesn't get to the to the numbers, really, and both of these guys are coming free. You know what I mean? So, yeah, both of these guys come free. It, the thing about this play, though, and he rushed three. This is the best sheds he got all day, is that all these guys would have been open. This guy was open. This is a touchdown. This guy's open. I don't know what his run. His running back might have been a streak, which kind of might have screwed up this post. But the shed, shed, the shed. I mean, you know how man is. Sometimes they give you sheds. Sometimes they don't. All right, I think we already saw all this shit. Kiv does the dot the ball one. So now we get this is a milk game really. And this is probably around the time Beast Mode ran up to Vault and said, you need to score. And then uh, Problem choked out Beast Mode. I don't think we knew how tough that play was yet. And that's the game, really. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I, I would assume, on a fourth and one, I would assume you would lurk the closest stuff, really. See, and it's just weird how they play. Like, why would Kiv... Kiv just snapped the ball with 15 seconds. I, I don't know what was going on. So it's just weird how they used to play these games with the points and everything. Because Kiv really should have milked more. I mean, a field goal wins the game, right? Well, not necessarily wins the game. But then, also, winning this game... Yeah, winning this game... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Winning this game was probably good for the season and everything. But you never wanted to give him another chance. That's what I was smart, though. You play, I guess you played that right for if I can get the touchdown and win the game. So, look. Look at the look over. Yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking, man. Having friends helps, chat. Having friends helps. Look. Man, he ain't doing the math. They, everybody else is doing the math. Yeah, most of us had. I don't know if we all had makeup on for that, but yeah, Kev, man. That was a ball game. Best opponents here. And, and what did it mean to you to do this in front of your grandpa? I want to circle back to him. The man drove so far to see you. So what did it mean to you to do that in front of him today? It means a lot, and especially the family watching at home. Shout out to all of them. I know they're watching on Twitch. Twitch, yeah, and everybody's watching. A lot of new Madden fans are Team Volt now. So what do you want to say to the Madden community, all the new fans that you earned today because of what you were able to show you can do on the big stage? I just hope I advance and hope I can do something tomorrow. All right, well, let's send it back to Tyler. Great job. All right, thanks, Trey. Appreciate that. Uh, we are doing... Now, I'll tell you, I don't think Volt made it, though. I think because of that field goal, and I don't know what he had to get blown out to go two to two and one and not advance. But that was honestly, entertainment wise, that was one of the best games 
that I've seen. It, the ending was weird because of the point difference on everything. Um, next week, I don't know what we're going to do. It is the first, last podcast before the new game drops. I don't know what we're going to do. We're going to talk about it. Um, that was a crazy game, though. It was entertaining. And I remember being there and it was an entertaining game. I'll tell you that. I, I enjoyed watching it. Like I said, uh, Prom put hands on Beast Mode. And Beast Mode won the tournament. Prom has not put hands on any other Madden players since then. So I don't know if it's lucky or unlucky if someone puts hands on you. If a problem puts hands on you. It could be lucky. I could not know. I really don't. We don't know. But like I said, Volt, I mean, he was entertained that year. The Swerve, uh, obviously, it's a big topic while watching that game. Um, and um, for me, it's a great thing in Madden. It's something that separated players, uh, separated an average player to a great player. You know, I don't think that's ever something bad. And it, it's something that was very, it was stoppable if you expected it. Kiv really just, I, he was shitty that game. Uh, and stopping the swerve. If you watch that year, problem, stopped the swerve. He killed uh, Volt. He beat Volt in the man championship. One, he got way more pressure on Volt. And um, two, like I said, if you positioned your players the right way, it was harder to swerve them. And uh, honestly, that, that game, though, Volt only got real one clean swerve. The rest of them were kind of just user catches. Because uh, of overplaying the swerve, you know, and that was kind of like the thought process in that, you know, so that was definitely a, a fun game to watch, man. So I hope you guys enjoyed it um, next week. And this was the new podcast episode 38. Next week is the last week before Madden 20 drops, man. I hope you guys are excited as I am. I'm going to grind the hell out of the game. I told you guys, man, that tweet, I hope it's still in here. I hope it's still here. Yep. Make sure you retweet that. I'm going to play 1,500 games of Mutt Head to Head. Guaranteed. It's happening. You know. And uh, definitely going to make that happen. So I did put that tweet. I will put that tweet in the description so you guys can retweet it. I will give $100 to everybody that retweets that if I don't play that many games. That's a lot. Uh... And it was tough. I mean, it was. It's going to be tough. But Madden 13. Or no, Madden 16. I played 1,300 games for fun. You know, now that I'm be streaming, it's going to be a lot of fun. I hope you guys watch. I hope you guys are ready because I am ready, man. And if you want to get the Madden Turf, the links are already here. Y'all can hit Madden Turf right now. Like I said, me, Clef, Skimbo, CC. I mean, we don't have 45 guys. We don't have five guys. I mean, we don't have a bunch of... You guys know the names. I don't even have to explain anything more than that. Dubby, Clef, Skimbo. I don't need to say anything else. There's nothing else to say. Man, and Turf, the links are below. Premium membership. You know what that means? You will get absolutely everything we put out all year. If it's from the first weekend to the last weekend, everything you put out, you will get that content with a premium membership. So check it out. I mean... Nothing else needs to be said, but this was the Need a Podcast, episode 38. Next week might be, might be podcast followed by Wverse Niner series to end Madden 19. If you want that, hit the like button. If you're in the chat, you want that, put some hennies or something in the chat, man, because that might be the move next Tuesday. Tuesday, 7 p.m. on my Twitch, man. That's when you check the podcast live. If you listen to it now, hit the like button.